Hi, my name is Devin Guevara. I am a ninth grader at Stuttgart High and Apprentice Sea Scout in Ship 802. This video is part of my Eagle Scout project. I hope you enjoy learning. Knots are deeply embedded in maritime lore and can be bafflingly complex or dazzlingly decorative. But a few simple to learn knots are of great use. Whatever the knot, it must satisfy two important qualities. It must be secure when tied and it must be capable of being untied, even after being pulled tight under load. Knots that jam have no place on boats, and the ropes used must be well cared for because your life may depend on it. The first thing you need to know is that ropes are for land. Here on the water, we have lines, and the lines for controlling the sails are called sheets. There are many different kinds of lines, but they fall under one of two different categories, natural fibers and synthetic fibers. Natural fibers include flax, hemp, cotton, and sisal. Advantages of these are, all natural fiber ropes have a lower breaking strain than synthetic ropes and can be cheaper. Disadvantage of these are, they need more care, can shrink and put extra strain on gear, and nowadays are more difficult to source. Synthetic fibers include nylon, polyester, polypropylene, and aramid. Advantages of these are superior lifting slash pulling strength as opposed to natural fiber rope, superior strength to weight ratio, synthetic rope pliant and grips the load better, all without marring surfaces, it is electrically non-conductive. Synthetic rope is inherently safer than wire rope with a breakage due to lighter weight. Safer, more cost-efficient alternative to wire rope for many applications. Disadvantages of these are light load applications are limited, exhibit substantial elongation when under load, strength is lost when subjected to temperatures above 150 degrees Fahrenheit, synthetic rope tends to melt when subjected to temperatures greater than 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Friction points are one good example. Taking care of your rope is very important, namely making sure that the ends do not fray and come undone. There are two ways to deal with this. Common whipping involves using yarn or a thin cord to hold the end of the rope together. Synthetic rope ends can be sealed by melting with a special heat tool for the purpose of cutting and sealing or by melting over a flame to fuse the fibers. Tape wound around the ends can provide a temporary whip. Cut the rope in the center of the tape. Taking one end at a time, light and let burn for approximately 5 seconds or until the end starts to bubble. Let cool, then remove the temporary whip. Heaving line can be used in several different ways but is most often used to moor a vessel to a dock or simply throw a line to a person on another vessel or in the water. Start by selecting an appropriately sized rope for the task at hand. This usually depends on the distance or the size of the vessel in use. Note that the line must be considerably longer than the distance it is to be thrown or it will probably fall short of the target. Then, coil the chosen rope in smaller than usual coils, making sure these do not overlap each other or get tangled. Proceed by separating the coils, by taking two-thirds of the line in your dominant hand. You now need to aim for your target. Throw the heaving line in an underarm swinging motion following through with it until the arm is well above the shoulders. First, release the coils in your dominant hand, and then those in your other hand, while keeping a firm grip on the shipboard end, which you may even want to tie down to your vessel. If necessary, especially for longer distance or heavier ropes, 
a weight can be placed at the end of the line to carry it a greater distance. But in small boat handling, this is seldom necessary. For larger vessels, a heaving line may be used to pull ashore a larger mooring line. The shipboard end of the line would be attached to the mooring line using a clove hitch, which is shown later. Knots are among the most common use of ropes and lines in the world. We will be going over the more common of the sailing knots. This video will review basic and intermediate fixed and sliding knots used when on or around the water. The overhand knot is the smallest and simplest of knots and the start of bigger ones. It can be an effective stopper but will jam when pulled too tight. The next knot is the reef or square knot. This knot is used to tie the reef points when reefing a sail. The knot is often tied as a slipping hitch to permit a rapid release. On land, this knot is often used to join two ropes. However, on the water, never use this knot to join two lines. It would be unreliable. Unless the knot is tied carefully, you will come up with a worthless granny knot. Another frequently used knot in maritime situations is the sheet bend. This is used for securing a small rope to the bite of a larger rope. It is very much like the bowline, but uses two ropes rather than one. Next is the figure eight knot. This knot is easily untied and gentle to fiber. It is the best knot for keeping a rope end from running through a fair lead or block. The stevedore's knot is used to prevent the end of a fall from running through the large swallow of a cargo block. Next we have the bowline. This has been called the king of knots. Nothing can jam it. It will never slip if properly made. It can be tied in the hand and dropped over a cleat, bit, or piling, or formed around a mooring ring. This is a knot you can both trust and be proud of. By the way, the bowlin as a knot has no particular connection with the bow line used to tie up the bow of your boat. The bowlin was first described by Thomas Bowling. In use, Bowling's knot became the bowlin. The French bowlin provides two non-slip loops used for hoisting, lowering, etc. The bowline on a bite increases the strength of a bowline and makes it several loops for various purposes. Next, the two half hitches. This is a quick and very reliable knot employed when making lines fast at a mooring. A midshipman's or top line hitch is next. This hitch is used to keep a line top. It is similar to two half hitches with the first half hitch doubled. It is easy to untie if the second half hitch is slippery. The timber hitch is useful when lowering or hoisting a spar or pole. The clove hitch is a simple, handy way to fasten a line temporarily around a pile or spar. Next is the cleat hitch. It's used to anchor boats to harbors and other such things, to keep them still without actually dropping anchor. Now the rolling hitch. This is a very effective hitch when a pole is to be resisted along the length of a spar. However, it is only effective for a steady pole. Slacking and jerking are liable to loosen it. Next knot we have here is the marlin hitch. This is a very simple hitch used in lashing hammocks, marling down canvas, chafing gear on large lines, etc. It is often made wrong. The ends of the line coming out of the hitch should always come out from underneath. The trucker's hitch has the distinctive feature of providing mechanical advantage when being tightened. It is especially useful for securing boats to trailers. Thank you for watching. To get involved and learn more, consider scouting. Material found in this video reflects Sea Scout Apprentice Rank Requirement 6 and Sea Scout Ordinary Rank Requirement 6A through D. Learn more about Sea Scouts at seascout.org.